The date is Friday the 1st of February 1974, another hot summer's day in downtown Sao Paulo, Brazil. The city is bustling, the workers looking forwards to the weekend. A fire starts in an overheated air conditioning unit on the 12th floor of the Huelma building and the fire quickly spreads. This tragedy will claim the lives of 189 people in the deadliest high-rise fire of all time. Built in 1971, the Huelma building was a 25-storey high-rise building in the downtown area of Sao Paulo, Brazil's largest city. It was leased by the Banco Crefisul for office space. At the time the fire started, there were estimated to be over 750 people inside the building, most of them employees of the bank. At approximately 8.50am, a faulty air conditioning unit on the 12th floor overheated, causing a short circuit and small fire. This was a window-mounted unit and the fire quickly spread to the curtains. One employee went down to the lobby to prevent any more people from entering the building, whilst attempts were made to fight the fire on the 12th floor. The fire was very smoky, and initial attempts to put the fire out using a fire extinguisher failed. The fire began to spread rapidly. By 9.03am the fire had been spotted by an onlooker across the street and the emergency services were called. They arrived just seven minutes later, at 9.10, and flames were by now visible, licking up the outside walls of the building. Fire crews entered the building but were unable to climb higher than the 11th floor due to the excessive heat and smoke. With the only stairwell impassable, rescue attempts would have to be made from the outside. By 9.20, the whole of the upper part of the building was ablaze. The fire raged, completely out of control. Huge crowds gathered to witness the unfolding tragedy, inadvertently hampering the arrival of additional rescue vehicles. By now, anyone trapped on the upper floors could see that there was no way down, and people began climbing onto the outside of the building. Their only chance to find respite from the flames was on the outer spandrels of the building. These narrow, concrete projections protruded only 90 centimetres. One can only imagine the terror of being trapped on a narrow ledge like this, hundreds of feet above the street, while the inferno raged all around. The ladders from the fire trucks were only able to reach the 11th floor, and poor water pressure meant that there was almost nothing that could be done from ground level to fight the fire. The blaze raged unchecked, the entire upper building completely engulfed in flames. Over 150 people had climbed to the roof of the building, desperately hoping to be airlifted to safety, but the plumes of fire and dense smoke shooting from the top of the building made it impossible for the circling helicopters to land. Footage shows terrified people trying to flee the flames on the rooftop, but with nowhere left to run. Helicopters lowered rescuers on ropes to try and airlift people who were trapped on the narrow building ledges, but again the swirling flames and smoke made this almost impossible to attempt with any degree of safety. In desperation, over 40 people jumped to escape the terrible flames. Some tried to grab the fire ladders as they fell, causing other survivors and rescuers to fall. None of those who jumped survived. Finally, having burned through all the combustible material in the building, at about 10.30am the fire began to subside. Helicopters were finally able to land on the roof, where incredibly 80 people had survived by hiding under asbestos roof tiles. Survivors were airlifted to neighbouring rooftops for urgent medical attention. People who had been trapped for up to four hours on the tiny concrete ledges were finally rescued. This operation was hazardous to say the least. For example, in order to rescue a young man from the 18th floor, the main fire ladder was raised to the 12th floor, with a secondary ladder then propped up on top to reach the 16th floor. The young man then had to climb down the outside of the building from the 18th floor to reach the secondary ladder. In the end, the tragedy claimed the lives of 189 people and over 350 were injured, many seriously. As of the making of this video, it remains the worst death toll for a high-rise building fire. The footage of the disaster is truly shocking. When shown on television, it prompted calls for a complete overhaul of the building safety codes not only in Brazil, but around the world.
The inquiry into the tragedy found many shortcomings. In fact, there seemed to be hardly any aspect of the building that could not have been improved. As one commentator succinctly put it, if you were trying to design a building that would kill people in a fire, this is how you'd do it. Built in 1971, the Huelma building used the concrete pillar and slab construction method common to many buildings of this time. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong in the use of this type of construction in regards to fire safety. Indeed, after the fire, the building was renovated and returned to use as the underlying structure was still intact. Just why the building proved so deadly was down to the design, the internal furnishings, and the total lack of fire prevention measures. The floor plan of the building shows two irregular shaped wings joined to a common central area where the staircase and lifts were located. There were no internal divisions separating this central core from the two wings. It was completely open plan. If a fire took hold, there would be no way to contain it in just one part of the building. Note that there is only one central staircase. The building had no separate fire stairs. Once the lifts became inoperable and the stairs impassable, there would be no other way down. Ceilings were made from flammable pressed fibre tiles suspended on wooden slats. Office partitions were made from wooden panelling. There were synthetic furnishings throughout the building. There was an abundance of paper, as well as lots of plastic office furniture and electrical equipment. It later came to light that the whole building had also been lined with a flammable plastic insulation. Once the fire began, it spread very quickly, easily able to travel along the combustible ceilings. The central open stairwell acted like a chimney, spreading the fire up through the centre of the building. At the same time, the fire was able to spread upwards on the outside. The heat shattered the windows of the floor above, and the fire leapt up from floor to floor. To compound the problem of the rapidly spreading blaze, fire prevention measures present in the building were practically non-existent. There was no sprinkler system, nor were there any emergency stairs or emergency lighting. There was no fire alarm system installed. Once established, the fire was able to spread unchecked. The majority of people who were successfully evacuated during the early minutes of the fire were done so using the four lifts which were located in the central service core of the building. An estimated 300 people were saved by using the lifts until the heat became too severe and this had to be abandoned. There were incredible acts of bravery during this tragedy. Sergeant Jose Rufino was able to rig a rope line from a neighbouring building and shimmy over to the burning edifice. He was able to rescue 18 people this way before the ropes burned through. A mother jumped from the 15th floor, cradling a newborn baby. She tragically died, but the baby survived. Almost unbelievably, there had been another high-rise fire in Sao Paulo just two years previously, when the Andraus building caught fire, trapping hundreds of people inside. Although there were many injuries, Miraculously, the death toll was relatively low, with only 16 fatalities. As a result, no changes to the fire safety code were made, and nobody thought to look at the potential risks present in other downtown high-rise buildings. An opportunity to avert disaster had been tragically missed. In the aftermath of the Huelma fire, the city of Sao Paulo upgraded its firefighting service, which had been shown to be woefully inadequate to tackle a situation of this magnitude. Building codes were updated, not only in Brazil, but in other parts of the world, notably the USA. The awful spectacle of a burning building full of trapped people proved too much to ignore this time. Perhaps the fact that 50 years later the Huelma building fire still holds its grisly record for the most fatalities means that lessons were learned, although it cannot be denied that these lessons were learned too late for the victims here. After the fire, the burned out shell was closed for four years, during which time it was repaired and renovated for future use. It stands today as the Edificio Praça da Bandeira. It was last inspected for fire safety in 2013, and it passed with flying colours.